What is going on guys? My name is Kenji, welcome back to the channel. I hope it's not the first time you're watching one of my videos, but just in case it is, I'm a doctor working in London. And welcome to the new setup, the new layout. Let me tell you guys that whenever you see this sort of layout, you know it's going to be a very deep conversational video, one-to-one -one with you guys. And I've also got my coffee here with me. I've got a really interesting topic for you guys here today. Um, there's actually no particular plan to this video. Um, I have written some stuff down on my iPad that I want to touch on, but there's no particular sort of video plan like there usually is on the channel. It's going to be largely me sitting down and talking to you guys about why to be very honest with you, over the last few weeks to months, I've been counting down the days to finally be done working in adult medicine. Now, this is not going to be a dig on doctors who work in adult medicine. It's not going to be a dig on the NHS or a diss on the NHS. I think everybody is different. Everyone has their own preferences. So in this video, I'll be talking to you guys about why I'm going to be choosing pediatrics. And definitely for the next year, um, I will be working in pediatrics almost exclusively. And yeah, just digging deeper with you guys as to my feelings and um, thoughts about the last few months working as a doctor in adult medicine. But before we start, let's go ahead and take a sip of the coffee and we're gonna jump straight into it. I just spilled the coffee all over me, so we'll be back in two minutes. Okay, so apparently I don't know how to drink from a cup, but let's go ahead and try that again. And we're going to be talking about the very first point that I've written down as to why I really haven't been, you know, enjoying the last few months working as an adult doctor. And the first one really is I haven't been able to give the care that I would want to give to my family. A lot of what I'll be saying is not new. It's all over the news. This is not, again, me digging the NHS. This is a, this is a very well-known thing that is currently happening in the NHS. But before we go on to that part, so I want to give you guys a quick analogy. Let's compare medicine a little bit to another job like working as a pilot so imagine that you're a pilot your job is to fly planes you will eventually get your customers the people on your plane to the destination eventually in the process of that journey when they're getting to that destination there is loads of turbulence that you know you want to avoid but you just can't avoid they have to wait hours to get onto your flight rather than the flight taking eight hours it takes 24 hours but eventually they do get there and they finally get to their destination from the customer's perspective you know the people on the plane they definitely would not be happy or you know enjoy their experience of being on that flight and imagine you're the captain who is standing at the door of that plane as they leave the plane you know they're going to be smiling saying thank you so much that was a great journey i'm glad we got here obviously but you know it was a very safe and smooth journey there was no turbulence and they're smiling at you but imagine you're that pilot who sat at the door all your customers are walking past you saying you know what is going on we've had to wait a long time we'd have to you know there's been so much turbulence and we just have not enjoyed the journey of course, they appreciate getting to that journey finally and eventually, but the whole entire process was was 24 hours rather than an eight hour flight. Imagine you're that pilot, right? So put yourself in that position where you're that pilot who had the responsibility. You know, your customers put the trust in you to get you to that destination, right? All the trust was, was in you and they believed in you. And it's supposed to be that sort of profession that is respected. It's just trustworthy, essentially. That's sort of how I've been feeling the last few months. You know, when I first started work as a doctor, I initially worked in pediatrics, which I absolutely enjoyed I love so much then I moved on to working in internal medicine as a doctor and that was probably the worst four months that I had not just because of you know what I'm talking about now but just generally I didn't really enjoy the specialty as much I went on to other specialties like obstetrics and gynecology psychiatry which I really enjoyed but in the last four months my final rotation working as a junior doctor I was back again in internal medicine and again just really really counting down the days and not enjoying myself to be honest with you because of this analogy that I've just spoken about but how does that analogy actually compare to what I face as a doctor day to day. I hope that gives you a bit of an understanding of what I'm talking about. But first and foremost, I'm talking about patients having to wait in corridors for 24 hours to be seen by a doctor. I'm talking about patients waiting in ambulances, you know, for hours just to be to be put into the a &E department. I'm talking about how it's, you know, at least in my, you know, where I work, it's normal to have patients in corridors you know, waiting to be seen, examining patients in corridors or being expected to, you know, examine patients in corridors. I'm talking about having to wait four days for an MRI head to confirm whether or not a patient has a stroke. This is all the sort of thing that I'm talking about when I'm when I'm comparing the analogy that I gave you of a, of a pilot to my day-to-day -day work as a doctor. All of this means that, you know, although the patients eventually do get free healthcare, which is absolutely phenomenal, that is fantastic, they do eventually get seen by a doctor. When they actually come to see me, so when I'm the doctor 
doctor who's on call, for example, and I'm coming to see this patient who's been sat in a chair, literally in a chair, and she's 80 years old, waiting 60 hours to be seen by me, I feel very bad for these patients. Yes, they do get the healthcare they eventually need. They do eventually get to a ward, although it might take 24, 36 hours. They might get the MRI head eventually, but it's that process of waiting and getting there that I just really have not enjoyed because I can't give the care, like I said, that I would, I would want to give to my loved ones. I'm not complaining, guys. I do really love the NHS. I really appreciate what it does. Um, and I still think it's fantastic that at least you do get some healthcare and you eventually get the scans and stuff like that you need. But I'm talking about the perspective of me as a doctor, right? What does that do to, 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 to me? What does that do to the nurses, the doctors, all of the healthcare professionals? You know, I've thought really long and hard about this, but what it does is that it really lowers is my job satisfaction again if you're if you're talking about the pilot who works for that airline he's not going to be you know proud about the job he did you know maybe he's really passionate he wants to fly planes he wants to get you know his his customers there safely but if he can't do that in a manner the best way possible that he would want you know for his family then that definitely lowers job satisfaction and is you know, honestly contributed to the, the fact that I've been so looking forward to to finally, you know, closing this curtain of working in adult medicine. And we can talk about why this is happening, you know, as I said, it's all over the news, but really and truthfully, the NHS is at its knees. You know, there's long waiting lists for to be seen by a doctor in the community. We know that this is, this is not something new. We also have a very elderly population, of course, that is getting older. You know, patients are living longer. We also have the highest population that we've ever seen in the UK right now. That's a topic for a, um, a different video. And if you're me to talk about my feelings as to why it's happening leave a comment down below but all in all what i'm trying to say is that there is a huge amount of pressure on the healthcare system currently the staff are feeling the pressure you know the, the nurses the doctors the physiotherapists everyone who works in you know in the nhs we're all feeling that pressure greatly and again you know me being on the front line it's definitely been affecting me as well but a quick coffee break before we move on to the next point so from a doctor perspective, you know, how do I feel that pressure? How does the pressure come across to me? So first and foremost, I feel like there's an immense amount of pressure to see as many people as possible, as many patients as possible. So I'll give you an example. Yesterday, I was on call. I was working in a &E, and my job was to clerk all of the patients who will be coming to hospital. And that list is ever growing, right? It's always going to be full, but it's getting more and more full. You know, I'm sure compared to a couple of years ago, the list of the patients that we have to see who are waiting to be seen is slowly growing, growing, growing. And I know that for a fact. I know that the a &E, de a e department um, at my hospital, I know that it's not really fit for purpose. The numbers of patients that the a &E department is seeing is not the numbers that it was built to sustain, essentially. So I feel a huge amount of pressure when I'm on call, when I'm on my job, or even, you know, my day-to-day -day job on the ward to see as many patients as possible in the least amount of time there. And again, that's not that's not what I want to do. You know, I want to be able to sit down with my patients and I want to be able to give them the time they deserve. I want to get to know them. I want to get to know their family. I want to talk to them. I want to make them very active accurate diagnosis and actually solve the problem that brought them to hospital, not feel pressure to see them as quickly as I possibly can so that I can just move on to the next patient and keep this treadmill going. So that's, you know, two points really. The first being that I don't feel like it's, it's, fit for purpose a lot of the time. And secondly, the pressure of being, you know, of having to see as many people as I possibly can. And, you know, really sort of um, to do with that point as well, it's looking after more patients with the same amount of doctors. So sometimes I'll be on a ward and we'll, we'll randomly have a patient in our corridor that we're just expected to look after now. You know, the ward is built for, let's say 25 beds, but one day we'll come to the ward and there'll be 27 beds. And you'll think, I'll think to myself, you know, how, how are we seeing two more people? You know, there's not enough beds here. There's not enough rooms and there'll literally be two patients in the corridor and we'll randomly create a bed because we just there's a patient who needed to be seen it's more patients that we need to look after with the same amount of doctors and the same amount of nurses and again that puts pressure on the staff it puts pressure on me because it means that i have to take you know maybe fewer breaks and you know i have to get through the ward round i have to get through all the jobs that are there so that definitely makes me feel a lot of pressure and again contributes overall to my job satisfaction and i really want to just reiterate that point Point. you can't get to know your patients and i feel like medicine is changing a lot you know i've only been in medicine for the last eight years or so but i imagine that maybe 15 years ago the landscape or the culture of medicine was very different i feel like back then at least from what i've heard from my patients but also my family is that back in the day you would know your gp you'd know your gp very well your gp would know your whole family if you want an appointment to see your gp like you can see one today or tomorrow when you're in hospital the same thing applies you know you'd get to know your your team very well you might be on the ward for a week week or two weeks and you'll know the whole family you'll have time it won't be a 10 minute conversation or a five minute conversation 
Like right now, honestly, the consultants probably spend two or three minutes with the patients, including myself. Well, I probably spend a bit more because I'm on the ward for a, a long amount of time. You know, we don't get much time with our patients, again, because of that pressure we feel. I don't even know who my GP is, if I'm honest with you. I've not been to the GP in months, not because I don't need a GP, but because it's been impossible to try and get an appointment. And I'm sure you guys who are watching this video probably are experiencing the same thing if you live in the UK and, you know, go to the NHS. So I feel like the landscape is changing so much and the culture is changing a lot. And again, that is just something that I just I just don't feel good about. What makes the situation even worse, although we are facing record numbers of patients that we see in hospital or G or in the GP every single day, there just seems to be this, this, this poor staffing level that is an ever-growing problem that is never fixed, you know? The ward that I've been on, um, not right now, but the last ward that I've been on was chronically understaffed. You know, we always had below minimum safe levels from, um, of doctors, of nurses, and it's just a normal thing that people don't really like look into and fix, right? Which which is just so weird. There's been many times where I've been on call and I'm on call and there's there's supposed to be two registrars in the hospital. One registrar won't show up for whatever reason, maybe they're sick or whatever. And the other registrar will just be expected to do the job of two registrars and cover the entire hospital of 600 patients. And the weird thing is sometimes the doctors are just happy to do it. Like sometimes the doctors are like, no worries, I'll, I'll do their job. But I, I, I find that quite strange, you know, if I was the registrar, I would say, no, this is not fair on my patients and it's not fair on me. You know, why am I doing the job of two doctors and why is this normal? Like, why is no one complaining to the seniors? And, and oftentimes we do complain. We'll send a message to the, the road managers and the consultants and say, hold on, this is, you know, we need more, we need more doctors. And that, that just won't be solved. Like it's, it's, it's almost sort of accepted that this is just a standard, um, which is not very fair. So staffing has been a big problem that has really, really, um, you know, made me not particularly happy over the last few months. Going back to the feeling of pressure, right? For what I spoke about earlier on, every inch of the hospital is taken to look after these patients. And I'm glad of course that we put patients first, but it's, I think there has to be a balance, you know, it has to be a balance between putting your patients first, but also a balance with looking after the staff because if you don't look after the staff then you can't the staff can't look after patients right so it's actually a, you know um, a sort of hierarchy that should be overturned i think staff should also be looked after equally to patients because again if you don't have good staff who are well fed well rested etc then you won't have the the right level of, of patient care essentially they won't be able to do their job and as i said every inch of the hospital is being taken sometimes to to look after patients like i'll, I'll show up to the ward to put down my bag you know before going to see my patients the place where I leave my bag, which was previously like a cupboard, it has now been transformed to a patient bed. And that's slowly been happening over the last few few months of working here. Every sort of corner, um, which used to be a staff room or a, a well-being place for the, for, the, for the staff, every inch is, is slowly being turned into an extra bed, an extra ward to look after the patients. Again, because we're trying to deal with a huge demand of healthcare with not enough space, you know, with, with not enough hospitals and GPs being built fast enough to sustain that. And again, you know, going back to the individual, the doctor, it makes it difficult because you don't no longer have that space to rest and recover to then go back to your job on call or, where, where, you know, wherever you are to give the care that you want to give to your patients. So that's also quite an important top, um, point that's been definitely on my mind the last few days. Now, I could honestly go on and on about this topic for, for hours, if I'm very honest with you, but I want to keep this video short. Let me know if you want me to make a part two of this video, guys. But I want to quickly just touch on how this compares to pediatrics and why I'm really excited to be moving on to pediatrics. Um, over the next coming weeks um, and months. I will make a separate video on why I chose pediatrics, but again, don't hold me to this, guys. I'm always allowed to change my opinion in the future, but currently my thoughts are on pediatrics and those are my current plans. And very quickly, I will touch on this. So how does this compare to pediatrics? So in pediatrics, so staffing has never been an issue in any of the time that I've spent in pediatrics over the last two years. If there is a gap in the rotor, if a doctor calls in sick or for whatever reason, they will do whatever they can to make sure that there is a doctor who replaces that doctor, even if it's the very last minute, even if they have to pay someone four times their normal hourly rates to get a doctor to come to the hospital at 9.30 p.m. at the last minute to make sure that there is enough doctors to look after the patients and again, not to put any more pressure on the staff. In pediatrics, there is no room for failure. 
because we're dealing with children, and this should be the case for everyone, whether you're a child or not, but, but particularly because we're dealing with children, there is no room for failure, which means that we give the children that we see the absolute best care that they can possibly receive. I've had my own family come to, to my hospital where I work in pediatrics multiple times, and I feel very confident that they're going to be given the best care they possibly can. They will get their scans straight away, their CT heads, MRI heads, whatever they need. They will get it in a timely manner. Also, there is no patient in corridors. Let's just put it that way. I'm not going to go into detail on this point, but there are no patients waiting corridors. There is enough place and beds for our patients in pediatrics. I also don't, from a doctor perspective, I don't feel rushed to see my patients as quickly as I possibly can. Even when I work in the emergency department in pediatrics, in the pediatric assessment unit, when I'm there, I will spend, and the team as well, will spend as much time as we possibly need to make sure that we have the correct diagnosis at the point at which we see the patient. It's not simply a case of triaging the, the patient as quickly as we possibly can and sending them to the next doctor. No, we, we will sit there. We will take a thorough history, a thorough examination. I will see the patient, the registrar will see the patient, the consultant will see the patient. They'll have three doctors at different seniorities come and give their full attention and full focus to the patient, but also the patient's family to make sure that they're happy with the care that they're getting. So that's also a really port important point to, to mention. Also, again, from a doctor's perspective, because pediatrics is a small group of doctors, you know, it's not like 600 doctors that we have in internal medicine. Pediatrics is its own sort of um, corner of the hospital that is managed separately. We get to know the team very well. I know my consultants, my registrars, the rest of the team, the nurses so, so well because we're a close knit group of people. So the culture is very different. When I'm in pediatrics, I feel like I'm, I'm part of a family and um, everyone cares about each other. We look after each other, we support each other. And that honestly feels so, so nice. But yeah, I don't want to go into too much detail and I don't want to keep comparing pediatrics to adult medicine because it's very different. I know I'm not stupid. Like I know there are so many differences between the two and it's a very nuanced topic. I will talk about why I've chosen pediatrics in a later video where I can go into a lot more detail about that because uh, it is an important point. But yeah, I hope this has sort of explained my point of view, guys. I think it's on this channel. I want to be as, as open and as honest to you guys as, as much as I possibly can. And that really is, um, you know, the tip of the iceberg as to why over the last few months i've been counting down the days to move on to pediatrics and finally leave adult medicine so i hope you've enjoyed this video i hope it's been somewhat informative I'm, I, I, don't, I don't want it to be a complaining video but i want it to educate you guys maybe you're a medical student going into to, to work as a doctor maybe you're a foreign doctor coming to the uk i hope it's been sort of some sort of um you know been beneficial to you in some way or form if it has done please leave the video a thumbs up uh, make sure you subscribe with notifications on to never miss another upload leave a comment down below as well if you if you're a doctor or not if you're a patient, you were all patients at the end of the day and a citizen of the United Kingdom, please leave your opinion down below in the comments. I'd really love to have a conversation with you guys about your own perspective um, from a patient's side or a doctor's side. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys on the next video.